ladies and gentlemen, boys and yeah, welcome to episode 151 of the Speared Sunnies podcast. That sounds good, doesn't it? Hey, 151 episodes. That's fucking great. Um, hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, episode 150 of the podcast, which is, you got to fucking watch that. If you haven't seen the, uh, the full show is on my channel. Check that shit out. It's fucking funny. Um, man, my life uh, uh, sucks at the moment. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm doing? I'm sitting here on a Tuesday. Oh, geez, patrons are getting this one fucking early. I'm sitting here on a Tuesday because I'm prepared drinking fucking... Uh, I'm drinking fucking instant, instant cappuccino from a plastic cup in my fucking warehouse because... Uh, all the milk's off. So we got, uh, we got one of those, um, Keelan, the editor. Also, this isn't even mine. This is Keelan's. I'm going to have to buy him another box because he, this, he bought this with his money. But, you know, he, also, hey man, my, my fucking warehouse. So fuck you. <laughs> um, I'll buy another box, bro. Ah, oh, no, I shouldn't have said that because now he's going to hold me to it. I could have just taken it. He probably wouldn't have said anything. Anyway, uh... We don't have any fucking milk here, so Keelan started bringing in uh, these these strange um, uh, sachets of of instant cappuccino that have not only do they have like powdered coffee in them, they also have powdered milk. So all you need is water. And I gotta say, cancer, horrible, <laughs> fucking awful. And but not only is it not good, right? I'm also drinking it out of a plastic cup. Drinking instant coffee out of plastic cup. Drinking coffee out of plastic cup. That's how you know that your life is fucked if you're drinking coffee from a plastic cup. I'm exclusively going to drink it like that for the whole podcast. I'm not going to do that. I don't even want to drink it. It's filth. It's also, also that I found some milk in the fridge, but it's fucking uh, long life milk. So it sucks, man. Hey, uh, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to talk about this later in the podcast, but I wanted to say very quickly that I have a very fucking exciting announcement to make. Um, as you guys know, uh, I've, I've been wanting to upgrade a lot of stuff uh, within the warehouse and the film spaces, and we're putting out more content than we ever have before, and I've been trying to figure out a way, what's the best way to fund it, uh, and always the answer comes back to Patreon. I don't know if you guys can tell, if you're watching the video version of this, everything's fucked. The, all of the posters that were hanging up uh, around the warehouse uh, in the podcast space have fallen off the walls. They don't stay secure to the walls. I want to actually get some nice art board and hang it up properly in, as opposed to literally blue tacking free posters I get in Warhammer magazines to the fucking wall. I don't know why this comedy special one has stayed there the longest. It just hasn't moved. I think it's been blessed with the powers of crowdfund. Uh, and it just won't ever fucking fall down, but it's there. The other ones keep falling down, and I'm ruining the posters, putting them back up again. Eventually, what I want to do is I want to actually build a proper fucking Speared Sundays podcast-themed corner uh, instead of having these ugly warehouse walls, uh, which brings me to um, Patreon. So what we're doing is we want to really grow this shit. I have a whole bunch of goals. Obviously, a set for the podcast, I want to also... Uh, film and record every single live show that I do properly uh, with good sound and cameras. Obviously not a fucking comedy special, but just so if there happens to be some magical crowd work on the night or something crazy happens, I can put that out on stage and it sounds good instead of, you know, recorded on the camera's audio like you heard with the podcast, which is just kind of bearable. But, that, you know, that you got to buy an audio recorder for that and you got to pay a guy to be there every time you fucking perform. That costs money. Uh, and also... Uh, I really want to do Vox Pops properly for bi-monthly bull. And uh, also, I want to bring back Cooking Without Instructions properly. But I want to film it like it's a TV show. I want to go to the set and smash out like fucking 20 episodes over two weeks and then release them throughout the year like a season one, season two type thing. Real high production value. All of these things cost money. So, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to grow my Patreon as much as possible because I know there's well, there's so many people watching and there's so many people listening and uh, I'm trying to get uh, people onto the Patreon page. I know there's a lot of people supporting me there, but I wanna I wanna double it. 
uh, I feel to, to get all these things done, I need to at least double it because all of this shit's so expensive. I got a quote from a production company for Cooking Without Instructions. They want $8,000. Um, and that's about as cheap as it's going to be for 20 episodes that are 20 minutes edited and filmed with multi-camera things in a, in a set. So uh, it's a lot of money to do this shit properly. And I'm trying to work out, I, I think I've worked out what, how I'm going to grow the Patreon. Uh, and it's by giving more value to the people supporting me there. So here's what I've done. Uh, pretty cool thing that I've done that I think is really great for all the Patreon supporters uh, that are currently supporting me and all the new people who will jump on. So, as you guys know, Radio Mike is no longer part of the Luke and Lewis show. He may come back at some point, but it's out of our hands, right? We didn't make the decision. It was the radio's call, whatever. He's not part of the Luke and Lewis show, um, and he might not be ever again. It's out of our hands. If, if we made the call, we would put him on uh, immediately, but we don't know if that's going to happen ultimately. As I keep saying, not our call, right. However, Radio Mike's a brilliant friend of mine and a very fucking funny dude and all you guys want more shit with me and Mike. So, what I've done is I have created a podcast with Radio Mike called Me and Mike and it is a podcast that will be exclusive to Patreon. So, uh, just because I have Speared Sundays, I got Luke and Lewis, I got all the shit that else else that I'm putting out online, um, I don't want another fucking thing that I have to promote publicly, uh, and I've also been trying to figure out what can I do just for the Patreon people, and this podcast is fucking a great idea, right? So, what we're doing, uh, it's the podcast is called The Me and Mike Podcast. It is a once-monthly um, podcast that goes out exclusively to Patreon supporters, uh, and it's me and Mike, um, and it's fucking hilarious. We've recorded a few episodes already. We've we've uh, smashed out a few episodes, and it's fucking stupid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put out episode one for free on the Speared Sundays feed, so you'll get it uh, on Monday. I will put it out, so uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get it fucking uh, now at the start of the month. And then from there, every single month at the start of the month, there will be a new Me and Mike podcast and, uh, they're very fucking funny. So you'll get a, you'll get a free episode. Uh, and if you want more of it, they'll be dropping once a month exclusively on Patreon and they're also filmed as well. So that's what we're doing. And, uh, in addition to that, you also get early access to everything I do as well as all of the, uh, the exclusive discord chat and free tickets discount merch, discount tickets, a whole bunch of shit that you get for being a Patreon supporter. So hopefully that's how I'm going to grow it. I would love to have you on board and uh, let's fucking uh, move on. I know I said I was going to talk about this more in depth later, but I think I just fucking covered it, didn't I? The Me and Mike podcast uh, starts on in the first week of March, free episode on Monday, so tomorrow. And uh, yeah, it's very fucking good and uh, it's to help grow everything else, bring back Cooking Without Instructions, and just make everything I'm doing fucking way better. So, what else do we have to talk about here? Oh, I hate my life so much! This is not good, man, but I'm going to keep doing it anyway, because my brain is small. Um, dude, please fucking support me on Patreon. Fuck the me and my podcast. I need, I need some milk. <laughs> I need some milk. Dude, I, uh, man, I had the funniest fucking bus trip. Uh, oh, are you 25? Are you still going to take the bus? Yes. Okay. Um, funniest fucking bus trip on the way here, right? Uh, as we all know, it is, uh, it is podcast policy. Everyone who makes the podcast me and everyone who listens to the podcast you doesn't pay for the bus. Okay. You don't. You, no one, no one pays, nobody taps on, on the fucking bus, okay? That's how Australia works. That was the foundation upon which this great nation was made, okay? Even before there was buses, when some guy was writing down uh, the idea of a bus, he was like, uh, uh, uh Jemison, I have an idea for uh, a mode of transport. Oh, you do, Thompson? Well, uh, please enlighten me. Right, well, uh, Jemison, what I was thinking is uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get some uh, some kind of long 
Long uh, a vehicle, uh, pulled by horses, perhaps, but we may invent some other technology for this vehicle to move. I'm not really too sure. Uh, I was thinking, with this, uh, Thompson, what's wrong? Uh, what's, what's going on? Are you having a stroke? And then Thompson dies, and then his replacement, <laughs> Phil, comes in. Yeah, I've got an idea. I reckon I've, uh, I've, Thompson died, but he filled me in on the plan. Oh, oh, we just, are we really just going to move on from Thompson? Yes, uh, it was, um, it was a lot funnier that he died for this bit, so I'm taking over. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. Yep, yeah, so uh, what are we going to do? Some kind of fucking long vehicle, right? And uh, everyone who gets on, uh, uh, they have to pay a certain amount of money. Uh, oh, but uh, does, the, does the bus do the rounds Anyway, regardless, even if it's empty, yeah, mate, uh, even if it's uh, got no people on it, it'll, uh, it'll, uh, it'll, uh, it'll, uh, it'll, uh, are you having a stroke? No, I'm just, uh, pausing for dramatic effect. It'll still charge you, and it'll still go there for free. Right, well, um, why don't, uh, why don't we just not, not pay for it? I mean, is, is, there, is there anyone, is, is there ever going to be people checking or punishing for you if you don't, uh, pay? Uh, if you don't pay, nah, man, nah, if you just, uh, they just probably just let you on, and if you don't pay, might chuck up a couple of signs, but other than that, I don't know, nah, nah, you just fucking do it for free, eh? Oh, uh, right, well, let's let's do it, but uh, i tell you what, uh, no, I'm never going to pay, and neither will anyone else. Yeah, right, oh, too easy. What are we going to do with this cunt's body? <laughs> No one pays for the bus, because if, if you fare evade on a train, okay, there is a small chance for ticket inspectors to get on. A small chance. You may get fined. Fair enough. I have never in my fucking life ever seen ticket inspectors on a bus, and there never will be, because it's not worth their time, right? Train, they can stroll down and check like three, four, five hundred cunts. Bus... Maybe 12? Not worth it, right? That that equation doesn't make sense. You'd be spending more money to send those guys out there than you would to uh, send them to run down a train line every hour, right? So there's never going to be ticket inspectors on the bus, which means you don't have to pay for it, and it's actually free. The bus driver may disagree, but most of the time, he gets it, right? I have been coming here... Fuck, it'll be for like six, eight months, almost every day on the bus, never paying. And I had the first bus driver tell me that I have to scan the ticket. And uh, it was a fucking experience because he, I, it, it seemed like he woke up that day being like, I'm, you know, he was like an old dude, right? He was like a 60 year old dude. And already, if you're a 60 year old man and you have to drive a bus, I'd hate, I'd hate everyone on the bus too. I would hate everyone on the bus, and I'd be real as angry as this guy was. This guy probably gets out of bed enraged. He wakes up, and he's like, oh, 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 Time for another beautiful day! And then he remembers that he's a bus driver, and he goes, Ah! Fuck! Right? You'd be so mad every day. Even if even on your day off, you'd, re you'd just re realize that you're a bus driver. You're like, Ah! No one respects me! Fuck! And I'm not shitting on bus drivers. That's an incredibly important job. But uh, I am saying uh, no one pays for the bus. I didn't make the rules. Those two guys from that little bit I made up made the rules. Uh, you know, I don't control that shit. So anyway, this guy, uh, I get on the bus and uh, don't scan my card. And he goes, uh, excuse me, mate. You have to scan your card. And... Uh, I, I, I assume he's talking to someone else. I keep walking. He goes, you got, you, mate, you got to, you got to scan your card. And I was like, oh, he's talking to me. So I pulled my card out and I went, boop, scanned it. And then I sat down and then he gave me the old, to himself. And then another person got on the bus and he had to go, oh, excuse me, mate. You've got to, you've got to scan your card. You've got to scan your card. And the other person looked at him and gave him the old, <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is great. Like, it is so normal in Australia to not pay for the bus that when someone asks you for the, to pay for the bus, you get shamed. Oh, you're asking me? That's so Australian. You're asking me to follow the rules? <sighs> who does this? Who who raised you? <laughs> what kind of parents do you have? Ask me to follow the fucking rules. 
And then, so three people got on the bus. It was me, the second person. You got to scan your card. You got to scan your card. Third person gets on the bus. Woman, middle-aged, doesn't scan her card. Excuse me, miss. You have to scan your card. And every single stop on the way here. There's only about, there's only about fucking eight stops on the way to the warehouse, right? Every single stop. You had to go, yeah, got to scan your card. Every single time to every person who got on the bus, there was like one person who paid for it. And I'm pretty sure that's only because the person in front of them got yelled at. Every single time. And and every time he did it, he got angrier and angrier and angrier. It was amazing. And then one, one time a, a group of three high school kids got on the bus. None of them scanned, right? And he goes, excuse me, boys. You've had a Real angry, just yelling at these kids. They would have been like 15. And uh, they all they all go, Ugh, they start fumbling around. They pull out their wallets. All of them get out their wallets. And then uh, genius boys, only one of them scan the card, right? Only one of them does. Like the one closest to the bus driver scans his card. And he goes, boop. And, he, <laughs> and then they go to move down. And he goes, excuse me, boys. I only heard one beep. You've got to scan. You've got to scan. You can't. You've got to it was so funny and then the other two boys didn't even bring their fucking mikey their ticket right they walk up to the guy and one of the kids just doesn't even try he doesn't even try to lie he just goes oh yeah man i uh i guess i left my wallet at home like he didn't even choose because i guess I guess I, oh, maybe I, oh, whatever you are, I, fuck you. That's what happened. I, I'm not paying for the bus. That's, the kid basically just looked at this guy and was like, hey, man, fuck you. I don't pay for the bus. And then, but I'm still going to school. Are you going to be that guy? Are you going to be that guy that kicks a 15-year-old kid off the bus on his way to school? I know you're not. I know you're going to let me on. I'm only saying these words to fill the minimum required for this social interaction to occur. So you can at least say to yourself, oh, at least I asked for an excuse. Hey, dude. No, I'm paying for the bus. And then this guy, the, the bus driver goes, what? It, well, you've got to scan your card, mate. What you need to do is you need to leave your card with your wallet. You need to leave your card with your wallet and put your wallet with your phone. And that way you won't forget your card. And I was like, oh, this dude actually thinks this kid has forgotten his card, when in reality, the rule is, this nation was founded upon this very law, no one pays for the bus. It was so good. Just watching that for like fucking 30 minutes. Dude probably got to the end of his route, right? You are probably driving for fucking six hours that day. And then by the end of it, the one person would get on, wouldn't scan his card. And he just wouldn't even say the syllables. He'd just do the... Do the <laughs> he just... So he started off going, You've got to scan your card. You've got to scan your card. And then by the end of his route, he'd just be going... And then just explode. Because I haven't seen that fucking bus driver again. He's gone, man. Fuck, that was funny. You've got to scan your card. Dude, it was so good. Oh, and that's right. There was then then one girl, right? This is my last stop. Stop before me. This girl gets on. And uh, so these two schoolgirls get on. One stop, right? Neither of them scan their card. He goes, And then they, one of them scans it. The other one makes it. Oh, if I didn't, I didn't for, I, I don't pay for the bus. And then just sat down. Because he's not going to be that, that fucking bus driver that makes a 13-year-old walk 50 minutes to school. No one's going to do that. They fucking know. A 13-year-old girl walked to school in her fucking uniform, surrounded by strangers walking in a highway. <laughs> he, he's not going to do that. And she's not going to pay for the bus, right? So these two sc high school girls get on. Uh, and then, uh, th then he drives off and then there's the next stop. And there's another high school girl in the same uniform, but this girl's in a wheelchair, right? And, uh, and... And so he pulls up and he has to get out, the poor cunt, and he has to, like, put down the little ramp thing so she can put her wheelchair up. And then she gets on the bus and then he picks the thing, the ramp back up and hooks it back to the bus and he sits down and then, uh, and then, <laughs> and then she doesn't pay for the bus. And I see him go, 
ah, she's in a wheelchair, fuck it. <laughs> it was just so funny watching this dude, this poor cunt get enraged. And that's why, guys, I don't know why he gave a fuck. That's not his job. His job is to bu- is to drive the bus, not to make sure that everyone fucking touches on. The poor cunt. I bet, you know what? I bet that's the fucking bus company being like, hey, so you know how we have, uh, we have two jobs? One person to drive the thing and the other person to make sure everyone pays for their ticket. Well, guess what? Now you get to do both of those jobs at the same time while you drive. Enjoy your fucking life. Am I getting a pay rise? No. <laughs> you have to pay your bus driver. <laughs> and Mikey's like, no, we don't. Mm. This coffee is horrendous. Why am I drinking it? I'm never going to stop. Oh, also, in uh, in other news, Cardinal Pell, uh, finally, I can talk about this. If you guys were wondering, a few, uh, maybe, maybe might be two months ago, I uploaded a, a podcast that only went to pa- Patreon because I realized I said a bunch of illegal stuff that I wasn't allowed to say. Well, guys, it recently became legal to say this. Cardinal George Pell, who is just about as high as you can get within the Catholic uh, Church without becoming Pope or God, uh, is a convicted child rapist. Convicted of sexually assaulting and penetrating uh, two boys under 16 and accused of a lot more that is still pending. And the reason, for some reason, Australia has this fucking bullshit suppression order that goes against freedom of speech in my opinion which who gives a fuck because we don't even have freedom of speech here uh and that's why i had to put a podcast up on patreon only because i was so fucking angry about cardinal pell being a pedophile that i talked about it and then i realized that it was illegal to say that in australia so i just chucked it on patreon anyway so that's um it's nothing funny about that man um that's really really fucked uh and to think that that because you know there was there's a problem with the with all the pedos in the Catholic Church, but for it to go that high is so fucked. And on one hand, I have the angry reaction of "Oh fuck the Catholic Church, burn it to the ground," and on the other hand, I have my experience, which is seeing little churches and. And uh, how, how, how good and helpful they can be. And I feel sorry for all the fucking genuinely good religious people out there that have never and would never do this horrible shit. And now their entire belief system is tainted by this fucking pedo. And however many of them are still in it. Because you know there are. Because Cardinal fucking George Pell was protecting uh, a, an older pedophile when, when he was going through it. Which means you know they did it together, and only one of them got caught, and George stood by him, tried to get him less jail time. Now that guy's died, and now George Pell has been convicted. So fuck him. I hope he rots in prison, and then rots in hell. Hey, little bit of a little bit of a positive note for the podcast there. I don't know. Makes me mad, man. So uh, I don't think there's a worse thing that you can do to somebody. Um, speaking of all this pedo shit, um, on a on a lighter note, actually it's not even really a lighter note. It's still pedo shit, isn't it? I mean, all this fucking the Adpocalypse version two with this fucking idiot. So this dude, um, if you don't know, this dude came out with a video where he pointed out that uh, YouTube and well, pedophiles on YouTube. Uh, are obviously looking at kids, uh, like doing gymnastics and stuff, and time stamping in the comments for other pedophiles when the kids are in compromising positions. If a if a fucking seven year old is doing the splits or or I don't know doing a backflip and and she's just in a compromising position, whatever. Um, all these pedophiles have been time stamping these videos and taking all these timestamps and editing them, editing them into compilations for other pedophiles and using the YouTube comment section to link up and and uh, join WhatsApp groups and just basically network with a whole bunch of other fucking pedo dogs. George Pell might have been in those 
uh, comment section. Actually, no, why would he? He had free range. <laughs> um, so, and, and I'm going to be honest, guys, I also found out about this and I was going to make a video about it. I have it sitting here in my notes written. Um, but I was going to do it in a different way to this guy did it. I think this guy did it in the wrong way. So this guy came out, he's quite a small YouTuber, came out with uh, all of the evidence and all that kind of stuff and pointed out that pedophiles were using YouTube to network and, and exploit kids and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but instead of uh, reporting it all to YouTube and making it a video to YouTube to fix because only YouTube can fix it, he instead uh, targets all of the brands that advertise on YouTube and starts messaging them and starts trying to get brands to withdraw advertising, which doesn't help anything, only hurts, because obviously brands don't control YouTube, they have influence there, but they can't help these kids, they can't track down these pedos, they can't do anything other than take their ads off the platform and hurt every single other fucking creator. Uh, basically, this guy uh, made it his mission to get brands to pull out of YouTube instead of to make YouTube help these fucking children and delete these pedophile rings from their website and report them to the police. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just really fucked. Um, and I don't, I don't know. I just think the dude went about it the wrong way. I understand that it's, that the dude's really fucking angry, but I, I felt like the way that he went about it was very manipulative. And in the video that I wrote, it was much more of a video to YouTube and the people in charge of YouTube because only they can fix this. Okay. You can't, Basically, what's happening now is uh, YouTube is being punished <laughs> and all of the creators are being punished and everyone who makes money from ads are being punished because pedophiles exist. So maybe we should demonetize the Catholic Church. What do you reckon? <laughs> Actually, that, might not, that might, might not be such a bad fucking idea. That might be the only way to rat out all these fucking people if you take the money out of the game. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess that's just another fucking reason why I want to grow my Patreon because... All of this shit means that uh, ad revenue is lower than ever and, and as unpredictable as it can be. You ever see some shit that makes you fucking angry, dude? You ever see some shit that makes you mad? I've been thinking about this all week. Saw it once, ruined my week. If I see it again, that's it for the year. I'm, okay, you ever see some shit that makes you so fucking angry that you just, you just want to make your head explode, like in the fucking cartoons, if I could do that, if everyone could do that once, you know, like, like, it was, if life, if real life was cartoony enough to make your head explode, but not cartoony enough to grow it back immediately in, in the next scene, like nothing happened, like you get one head explosion, and then you actually die, if life was like that, I would use my one explosion on this fucking thing, I saw a Facebook ad, and it wouldn't even be in front of people, right? It'd be by myself. I'd see the shit, and I'd just be like, well, that's fucking idiot, and explode my head. Uh, I saw a shit, this fucking Facebook ad for some shit product, and by the way, can we say, if you ever see an ad for a, a fucking new product or a new technology on Facebook, it sucks, and it was made by nine-year-olds in Bangladesh. Okay? If it's a, if it's a, if it's a product... For a new technology or a new anything, a new take on this, a new take on that, a new kind of breaking technology, anything new on Facebook, claiming to be like a the next generation. You always hear that one, the next generation of fucking fidget spinners. Anything that's the new gen, next gen, brand new, new take, new iteration, next evolution, any of that shit. For a Facebook ad, it sucks and it's the dumbest shit you've ever seen, but they have a really good video ad, so it has like a, a fucking a million views and, and 995,000 of those views are like dickheads from Brazil who barely have an internet connection, let alone the money to afford this fucking piece of shit, right? <laughs> You always see that on those like massive inno innovation products, those revolutionary things that when you look at it, looks kind of cool in the ad, but then you think about it and you're like, oh no, that'd be a piece of shit to actually own. It's always filled with like a half a million comments from people from Brazil in with broken English talking about how good it is, but they'll never buy it. Um, I saw 
uh, this is for flights, right? For flying with a partner. It is a hoodie that fits two people. The cuddle hoodie. No. Dude, I couldn't fucking imagine sitting, even for a short flight, two-hour flight in this fucking hoodie, where you've only got one arm and the other arm is just bunched up against your sweaty girlfriend. And you can't fucking move. Can't even feel her tits because her arm's in the way and you don't bend like that. That'd be the worst shit ever. Could you imagine a 14-hour flight, Australia to LA, sitting there locked in with your fucking girlfriend? You would be single by the end of it, and then halfway through the flight, you'd break up and you'd be single, and then the rest of the flight would be debating over who gets to keep the fucking hoodie. Because if you own that thing, you're so fucking dumb that you probably want to keep it, even though it's ruined your relationship. That at all, all it would be, I want to keep it. No, it's mine. Hey, you're both single. Neither of you need it. But that's the dumbest fucking shit I've ever seen in my life, dude. The double hoodie. I mean, I gotta say, that's that's like like the only the only double thing that we need in relationships is double ended dildos. I think that's the only thing that's actually useful. The double hoodie? Nah. Double toothbrush? Stupid. Double dildo? Functional. Albeit, a little bit uncomfortable. Not, t- not talking from personal experience, mind you. <laughs> I'm, talking to, I'm talking about all my, all my lady listeners. Every single one of you lesbians. You know, I get it. You might need that shit every now and then. Sure, it's probably easier just to do, alright, you first, then me. That probably makes a lot more sense. You first, then me. Oh, you want to go first this time? All right, then me. Both at the same time with the double in a dildo? Yeah. I mean, if we're a little bit drunk, we haven't done it for a month, why not? Bit of a treat, right? But you don't need a fucking double hoodie. I would say the double hoodie, though, does have a higher chance of making you come than a double in a dildo because you know no one's coming. You know, <laughs> no one's coming on a double in a dildo, man. They're, that's for fun. That's for fun. But you know what that is for? That's for when both of you are like real horny and both of you think that's a good idea, even though the last six times you did it, it didn't work out. Because you think your life is a porno. Dude, every time you're real horny, you think your life is a porno. You know when you're just so fucking horny and you, you just think, you know what? I want to come three times. Two minutes later, you come once and you're like, you know what? I want to sleep. (laughs) That's the only time you want to come three times is before you've come once. (laughs) Then you're like, yeah, you know what? One's pretty good. Maybe two in 40 minutes. If I feel like it. But right now, Whoa, that was rigorous. I'm, I'm a little bit dehydrated. Seven minutes of intercourse. Fuck that. I'm done. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. But anyway, the main thing to remember is you have to touch on your head. I had a comment that also annoyed me. Um, I was talking about, uh, I've been going to gym and putting on weight. Oh, as you can fucking see. Uh, and uh, I've been uh, having having mass gaining protein shakes, and I got all these comments from all these fucking armchair personal trainers, nutrition knologists, fuckheads going, "Ugh, protein shakes don't work." And then they would send this big twenty minute video about how eating eight meals a day is better than uh, than eating a regular amount of big meals and then having two of these mass gaining shakes. And all these people are like, "Oh, oh, just, oh, dude." Protein shakes don't work. All you got to do is eat eight meals a day. Who the fuck has time to eat eight meals a day? Hey, I know this might annoy you. I know this might annoy you and this might piss you off. But yes, eight meals a day would work really well if all you did was fucking sit at home and cook. That's it. That's all you do. I've done the eight meal a day thing and it sucks. 
It's hard, it's inconvenient, it's fucking expensive as, and it sucks. Do people losing weight have it so easy? All you'd need to do is cook a regular amount of meals. Make them healthy. If you're trying to put on weight eight meals a day, do you understand how much fucking food that is? How many meals you got to make? I can't think of eight different types of meals. Chicken and rice. Pasta. Already I'm lost. What is another food? Chicken and rice. Pasta. Baked beans. (laughs) Not a meal, but I'm putting it in there. What the fuck else do humans eat, dude? Um, oh, breakfast, right? So porridge or something. That's four. I'm only halfway through. I'm sick of it. Fuck. Chicken, rice, pasta, baked beans, breakfast. I don't know, sandwich? (laughs) Uh... Fuck. That's it, man. That's all of the food. That's like easy to cook and prepare. I'm not talking about extravagant meals you can get, like takeaway shit. I'm like actually stuff that you can cook in bulk and put into Tupperware. That's fucking it. It's chicken, rice, baked beans, breakfast. And I've already forgotten what I said. The other one. Whatever the fuck. Rewind, huh? Hey, you think I'm dumb? Rewind it. That's it, man. What else? Fuck. I actually I actually can't think of another food. Like no, I'm not talking like snacks like, you know, fruit and shit. I'm talking like a meal meal. That's it, dude. That's all we fucking eat that's easily cookable. There's no such thing as eight meals, man. Too many meals. I know this might piss all of you fucking anti-protein mass gaining shake people out there, but listen to this. Listen to these three words. I know it's going to ruin your day. Hey, works for me. (laughs) That's my new thing. Anytime, anytime a fucking expert in the comments section comes out to tell me that I'm wrong over something that I've been doing for like six months and it's working, I'm not going to debate anymore. That's it. I don't I don't give a fuck. All I'm going to say is, hey, works for me. And you know, you know that that makes them so fucking mad. Because if someone said that to me when I knew I was right, I would get so angry. Hey, oh, you have to eat eight meals a day. Hey, dude, works for me. Oh, you're wasting money on your protein stuff. You can get just as much protein and calories by eating eight meals a day. Hey, dude, no one eats eight meals a day. Fuck that. Works for me. I have a regular amount of meals. I eat bigger portions. I have fucking breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then like a snack in between. Four meals, make them big, two protein shakes, smash out four to 6,000 calories a day. Hey, man, who works for me? Putting on heaps of weight. Doesn't look like it yet, but it's working. Lifts going up. Everything. Works for me. So I'll keep sucking down that protein shit that gives me cancer because I don't want to be fucking sitting there. If you eat eight meals a day, you need a other fridge for a week. Eight meals a day? Do you know how much fucking Tupperware you got to buy if you're not washing that shit every single day? Do you want me to put eight fucking Tupperware containers in my dishwasher every day? Nah, not going to do that. I barely wash my protein shaker. Sometimes I use it two days in a a row. Rinse it out. Don't give a fuck. Day old milk in there. I don't care. Hey, works for me. That's what I'm going to be saying on my deathbed. Lewis, you can't stop drinking out of that fucking protein shaker. It's a year old. You've given yourself fucking lupus. Hey, doctor. Works for me, and then I die. That'll be my last words. Works for me, death. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, put your reasoning in the comments. I don't give a fuck. 
works for me. So I'm going to keep sucking out these protein shakes while I drink these powdered coffees and powdered milk. And I might, I might, you know what? I, I always think this, all these people go, oh, it's not good for you. You shouldn't eat that. Uh, hey, I don't drink, never have drunk, never done drugs. The way I see it, anything that I do to my body, I don't do extreme sports. I don't do sport at all other than weightlifting and a bit of cardio. I don't do anything dangerous ever and I don't drink and I don't do drugs. Anything that I do to my body, I'm going to end up even with all of you normal cunts. Huh? So, hey, works for me. No matter how many years I'm shaving off with my fucking powdered food, there's no way I'm shaving off more time than you with your fucking poison alcohol drinks. And I don't care. If you drink, works for you. Go for it. But you know what? I drink poison cancer powder. Works for me. This coffee does not work for me. But I'm still going to drink it. Oh, dude. Okay. What's there any other thing, anything else I wanted to talk about? Not really. Um, oh, I'd love to hear what you guys uh, think about the, um, the Luke and Lewis show. Uh, if you listen to a podcast or something, go check it out. Because uh, we're back into the swing of it now. And I think uh, had some really funny shit. <laughs> Uh, happen on. I think I, I ate an egg out of my pocket while live on radio. Fuck, our show sucks. It's so funny. Our show is so shit. Like, if you compare the professional... I don't, I don't mean, like, the content's bad. The show is hilarious. But, like, everything else about it is shit. Our attitude towards it, the, the in-jokes, the production quality, the professionalism... Everything about it is just so shit, and that's why it's fucking great, because it's not polished media shit. Um, what do I want to talk about? Oh, let's, let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we, you cunts? Um, oh, also, let me know your favorite parts of last week's podcast, the live episode. Let me know what should be cut up into, I want to do three videos. I've already put one out uh, of me getting banned from the podcast awards. What were your favorite moments? I, I, got, I want to put up two more longer videos that'll come out in the next couple months or so. Two more long highlights, like 10 minutes plus. I'm thinking the felching stuff and then probably the, the cuck update. I reckon I'll do those two. Uh, but any other really funny moments that you think should be chopped into clips, I want to know. Stuff good for Instagram. What what were your standout moments that made you laugh? I want to know because I was fucking there and then I've edited it and then I've put it on my YouTube channel and now Keelan's editing it. I'm watching it. I think I've watched it too many times. I've forgotten the best moments of it. So do let me know because uh, that will be very helpful. Um, <clears throat> All right, miscellaneous bit at the fucking end, and then I'm going to go home because it's 9 p.m. and I'm still at the warehouse working on shit. Um, here we go. If you would like, if you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the part of the podcast where I answer questions sent in by listeners. If you need any life advice, uh, if you have a funny story to tell me, please do send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. That's the email. All right. Here we go. Dealing with online comments. Hey, Lewis, this one's a bit of a 1% problem. <laughs> yes, I would, I would say. The moment, if you hear the first, the first part of that sentence, dealing with online, every cunt in the third world went, well, they didn't do anything because they don't have internet. But if they did know about these problems, they'd be like, oh, dude, get over it, man. I have malaria and so do all of my children. <laughs> and I've got nine kids, so shut up, cunt. Hey, this is a bit of a 1% problem, but uh, I've recently had a surge in my YouTube channel. One of my videos went a bit viral. With that, brought an audience that I was not targeted, targeting and led to getting a shit ton of comments misinterpreting the video and ignoring points that I made. Um, because of this, I can't really read my comments anymore without being bombarded with death threats and multiple versions of being, versions of being called a basement dweller. I can't fucking speak. I've been doing too much speaking recently. I've put out stuff since then, but that video is still getting many views, even after many views. Uh, and I don't want to put myself down trying to wade through the garbage. I know you had a similar thing with the Stop World Vegan Day, so how do you deal with this kind of shit? Um, and this video, it's got like 50% dislikes. Uh, 
I mean, it's the internet and it's fucking words. I, I always think of this when... And I guess this kind of goes for anything. When when you have like a... I, I tend to disregard hate comments because that's actually the logical thing to do. Um... Unless, unless you've done, unless you've done something that's actually bad, bad, and I would say unless 90, 80 to 90% of the comments, I'd say anything over half, if anything over half of the comments are bad, you may have actually done something bad. And maybe that's your fuck up and you've got to deal with it. But anything, if, if comments are like mostly positive, I disregard hate comments because I love I love taking on board constructive criticism. Even if someone says, "Hey man, I didn't like this video because this, this, and this," um, I always read those and I take those on board. Even if I disagree, it's something worth listening to and taking on board because it could help you make a better thing that could attract that type of person later, right? But if a comment is just a hate comment, a hate comment is different from a dislike comment. You know, like I didn't like this because of these reasons is different from kill yourself, you suck, or just you suck. I ignore those comments because that type of person obviously disliked your video so much to comment, which means your stuff never would appeal to them no matter how much you changed it. You just don't gel with them. That's You're just not their genre of comedy or video or photo or whatever you do. I kind of view it like that. I hate Screamo. But I would never go to a fucking Screamo concert or or even a Screamo video and write, this sucks. Because it's not for me. And no matter how much the Screamo genre adapts, I will never like it because I don't like that genre. And I feel like a lot of people leaving just outwardly hate comments are like, oh, you just don't like this genre of video or this genre of comedy or art or whatever you're doing. You know what I mean? So it's not worth taking on board because you can never win over that person or people like them because you're just not for them. Um, so to me, disregarding comments like that is just makes a lot of sense. Um, so there's, I mean, it's not... I haven't watched your video, um, but I mean, maybe you've done a bad video, dude. It happens. I've done a bad video before. I don't know, dude. If you've made a bad video, who gives a fuck? Part of the journey. People will forget about it very soon. Uh, and you will learn from it and you'll make a, you'll become a better YouTuber and you won't make that bad video again and you'll learn from it. Uh, or... You've just made a video about something that people really love, like the World Vegan Day, and cunts are going to fucking hate you for it, and there's nothing you can do about it, so s don't look at it. I've got a couple videos like that that I don't look at the comments, so... <laughs> what are you? Basically, you've emailed me going, Oh, every time I look at this, I feel bad. What should I do? Hey, dickhead, don't look at it. Oh, every time I put my hand in the fire, it gets burnt. What do you reckon I should do? Oh, gee, how about don't put your hand in there? Oh, I don't know about that one, chief. I don't know about, I don't know about that one. Yeah, dude, just don't fuck, fuck these cunts, man. Who cares? How do you deal with this kind of shit? Disregard it. Make another video. Focus on the positive. And I know, th and you know, if you listen to this podcast, I get hung up on negative comments all the time. That's half my fucking podcast is people saying dumb shit to me and me yelling about it. Uh, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to also focus on the positive because generally it, there's, it's the vast majority, but for some reason our fucking stupid brains get hung up on negative shit. It's just a overall common human problem. But yeah, man, end of the day, just gotta fucking ignore it. Um, <clears throat> okay, guys, what else do we have? Uh, <laughs> I'm gay, backfired. Uh, what up, cunt? I have a real quick story for you. Since I heard about, you, heard, since I heard about telling salespeople I'm gay instead of saying no to confuse them, I've been doing it. However, today they got me and I had nothing to say. Yeah, every now and then they get you, but it's always memorable. Uh, he said hi and tried to stop me in the street. I said immediately, I'm gay. 
So this guy looked at me right in the eyes and just said, same, and then winked at me. <laughs> he fucking got me so good that he actually managed to stop me. And then I then heard his speech about dying orphans or some shit. Then I left. Uh, thought you'd enjoy this. Have a shit one. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, dude. Um, all right, guys, uh, that's going to be the end of the podcast. Uh, I'm running low on questions. I, I don't know if you can tell there, but I'm running low on questions. Send a, uh, if you need a, any life advice or whatever funny story, send it to podcast at com. And, uh, you know, whenever I'm low on questions, you're a much higher chance at getting answered. So send it shit in now. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, tomorrow, the first episode of the Me and Mike podcast will be posted uh, on the Speared Sundays podcast feed. Uh, just to give you guys a little free sample of it. And from then, um, new episodes will be going up exclusively to Patreon. The video and the audio will only be for Patreon supporters. I've been trying to work out a way to um, continue making stuff with Mike and uh, give back to the podcast supporters in a special way that only they get to see. And that's uh, how I'm going to do it. So uh, the Me and Mike podcast episode one is out tomorrow publicly. All the other episodes will be exclusive to Patreon. I'm really excited about it. And uh, I really do hope uh, it'll help grow the Patreon and give me a bit of a budget to bring back Cooking Without Instructions and build a set and do a bunch of other amazing stuff. So if you've ever thought about jumping on Patreon, fucking now is the time to do it. I have so many plans. I've ne- I've never put out this much content in my life and it's because I have the budget. Uh, imagine what we can do if we bring it on more. I really, really, really need to bring on Kiel in three days a week. Just can't afford it yet. I'm like fucking this close. So uh, jump on, man. I, I really want to, I really do think that uh, it's the key to taking this fucking movement next level that we're doing with the uh, little uh, online stand-up comedy thing from Australia. So thanks for listening, guys. Episode 151 of the Speared Sundays podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you uh, next Sunday, but tomorrow, me and Mike podcast, episode one. Very fucking exciting. See you later, guys. Have a shit one.